When we mix the music for film, it's one format. When we mix it for a record, it's another format. So, um, and now, of course, with, with, uh, with records, you have, we call them records, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> music. Uh, if you're going to hit play it on the CD, you're going to download it, or you're going to play it in your house. You can play it in two-track stereo, or you can um, have left, center, right, or you can have surround. But all those need to be mixed separately. So the producer of the soundtrack oversees that mix. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is the, is the, is the producer of the soundtrack determines how the music's going to sound on the, on, the, on the album. For instance, on the Black Stallion, I cut several short uh, tune segments together to make one longer cut so that when you sit and listen to it, it makes a little more sense because you don't have the aid of the film to look at. Many, there was a great composer in Hollywood who since passed away, Jerry Fielding. Someone came to him and said, we want to play a bunch of your film music at a concert. And he said, well, if you want me to prepare something for you, I will. But when I write for films, I'm writing knowing that people are looking at the music, or looking at the film, and so the music has to, has to make sense. And it doesn't make sense on its own. So if you want to play some of my music, I'll redo it for you, or I'll write you something new, or I'll write something based on the themes of the film. But it's real hard for a composer to, to have his or her music just listened to without the aid of the, of the film, because it's, it's a collaborative art form. And now you're taking part of the art away. So the, sound, the challenge to the soundtrack producer is to make that music interesting without the aid of the visuals. You've got the liner notes and tells the story and whatnot. So that's the challenge for a soundtrack producer.